Hey Daniel. So after looking over your videos, I realized what you need is not necessarily a movement video review. You're a fairly new shooter, so we're going to go over some other things that you need to know. And you probably already know what things you need to work on, but we're going to talk about it. First of all, number one is grip. Gripping the gun and the way you grip the gun is very important. So when you grip the gun, you have a gap here between the beaver tail and your thumb. You need to close up that gap. That's really important. And you can do that by applying upward pressure on the trigger guard. So Pixie, if you'll come and hold this gun for me. This is my 12 year old daughter. Okay, so let's imagine as you're holding the gun, when it recoils, back up a little bit so we can see, <laughs> as it recoils, it recoils up and down, right? Mm -hmm. And what you're doing is applying side to side pressure on it, like a sandwich. So it doesn't. So that still, the gun still goes like this inside of your hands because you're just applying sideways pressure. Instead, you need to focus on applying upward pressure on the trigger guard that way and pressure this way underneath the beaver tail right here. So there's no gap there. So you're pushing up here and up here and that way it can't move up and down. See how hard that is? I can't even rotate it in her hands because she's applying that pressure. There is no recoil, it's just flat. So that's number one. So how do you get there? On the draw. So from the draw, you're gonna pick this spot on your finger right here. And this depends on how thick your trigger guard is. If you have a really fat trigger guard, then instead the trigger guard is going to go on that knuckle, otherwise you end up pushing it from one side to another. If you have a thinner trigger guard, then the trigger guard goes right here in between these two knuckles, right there. So this is your index point, and that part of your finger always hits the same spot on the trigger guard every time you draw. So when it's time to draw the gun, this hand is gonna come across your belly. That way you can start forming your grip early on the way up rather than slamming your hand into it all the way up here because that knocks the gun off the target. So you can set a timer for four tenths of a second and just time yourself going from here to here. So this hand is ready to start forming the grip and this hand is all the way up under that beaver tail tight with a good firing grip on the gun. Four tenths of a second, point four, it'd be like, beep, 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 and just do that a few times until it gets comfortable. Then you're gonna start right here, and you're gonna take that index point and jam it onto the bottom of the trigger guard as early as possible without sweeping yourself. So you don't want your hand right here as you're drawing or you're gonna move the muzzle right past your hand. Instead, you have it over just enough that you can get it on there early on the way up. And this applies upward pressure. You're not coming in from the side and knocking the gun off the target. You're hitting it from the bottom, bringing it up to the target. So hit that same spot on there every single time. And then you're gonna wrap your grip. Now your thumbs don't really matter. They can be floating off the gun. Just make sure you're not pushing onto the gun with your thumbs because if you do that, it pushes all your shots to the right if you're a right-handed shooter. Another thing I did notice is you do have a lot of shoulder tension. Sometimes they're relaxed, sometimes they're tense. And I saw when you're sending shots low, when you were having misses on the steel that were low, it's because your shoulders were really tight. So you have to focus on gripping the, the gun with only your hands and forearms. But this is relaxed. You don't grip the gun with your whole arms. It's just the hands and the forearms. Now, another thing is, if you're gripping the gun really, really hard with your right hand and you're a right-handed shooter, 
you need to be, have the freedom to manipulate this trigger finger. Well, if you're gripping it really hard, you're gonna have that sympathetic response where that finger curls in with the rest of your hand and you can't manipulate the trigger quickly. So with your right hand, the one you pull the trigger with, it's gonna be a little bit more relaxed and your left hand is the one you really crush the gun with. Apply that upward pressure on the trigger guard and downward pressure from under the beaver tail. Now, another thing is your wrists. You don't wanna have your wrists flopping around. You wanna have your wrists locked. So if you think about flopping your wrist, you tighten it until it stops flopping. That's how it needs to feel when you grip the gun. So you can actually rotate that hand forward a little bit. And see how that locks my wrist forward? So there's no flopping back and forth. That helps a lot with the recoil. Same thing with this hand, it's locked forward. So lock those wrists forward so the gun can't flip on you. So hopefully that'll help. Uh, one other thing is you will notice as you're gripping the gun really well, these lat muscles here and here engage. And that helps keep the gun from rising up like this. It holds the gun down. Like if you were holding onto a stick and pushing it into the ground, that engages these lateral muscles right here. So you should feel those engage as well to keep the gun from rising. So that's my little lecture on grip. And let me know what your thoughts are on what your next lowest hanging fruit is and I'll make another video for you.